Welcome to another convo with CJ. Today, I have one of the most dynamic individuals that I've ever met in my life. This person, this man, this worldly man is not the typical issued employee that you will meet along the way in corporate America or anyone in your life. He is nothing uh, 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 next to being normal. And he is an individual that is on the path and pursuit of excellence. He is my dear friend. He is a technology guy. He invests in himself and he levels up every single year. In fact, every time I talk to him, he has a brand new idea. He has a brand new way of showing and telling and talking about solutions and things that he brings to the market. And let's not even talk about the travel. He's always somewhere in the world. And let me tell you guys, he does it by himself. I bring to you today, Kamal Gregory. How you doing, Kamal? Doing good, man. I appreciate that. No problem, man. Um, really happy to have you on the show today. Uh, for those who don't know, my studio background, and I'll, I'll show you this. My studio background, as you can see, I got the idea from Kamal. Kamal came to me and he helped me understand how to create a live functioning studio with the lights, with the camera, with the mic, with the background. And you can see with Kamal's background, this is real, this is serious. And uh, I, I appreciate that he gave me his time and helped me understand all the nuances. What I wanna ask you Kamal to get started with this is, you know, when did you make the decision that you were going to embrace technology in your professional endeavors to stand out from the crowd? That's a good question. Um, honestly, I, I'm gonna bring my children into this one because it was more around them. I used to get on them all the time about the back then it was Fortnite. And they will watch these YouTube videos of these kids, I guess, giving them cheap moves or whatever it is. And they actually, you know, I used to make them get off of that. I don't I didn't understand it. But then they asked me a question. They were like, well, you know, look at your videos. You know, when I watch seeing you a couple of times on Zoom calls, it looks horrible. Like, why would somebody buy something from you um, with that background? It's like you're not serious. But look at this guy on Fortnite and look at his system. I couldn't say anything. I mean, they were absolutely right. So I actually kind of gave them an idea to, hey, help me do it. You know, give me a budget. What are some of the tools? And, you know, that went down a rabbit hole. And but it leveled up everything. So I can't take credit for that. I actually I'm, I'm going to pull that in for the young people that are doing it every day. And I discredited them and I didn't realize how hard and what level of work went into this because it's not easy as you know there's a lot of studying a lot of research you you know every tool you get you have to learn it and you have to learn it pretty well you don't have to be an expert but you have to learn it well enough so you don't have glitches and these these type of things that can go on so i'm going to tip my hat to the young people for helping me level up and bringing it to corporate america which i don't know why this isn't a standard Wow. Wow. I, I agree with it. It should be a standard. Let me ask you this just as a follow up to that. And the standard, when you think about how you are leveraging technology and for guys and so that, so that you know what we're talking about, we're talking about the actual technology that we're coming through right now from the use of Ecamm or OBS to have these different type of virtual studios that allow you to be at a higher standard and a higher pursuit of excellence than most people in the professional world, this is what Kamal has embraced and he's taken it to the next level. Um, so we're talking about, you know, the, the, the virtual studios, we're talking about the camera that's being used. We're talking about the lights, you know, Kamal has lights that he's using right now. We're also talking about the background uh, in, within the studio, both of our studios, as you can see with Kamal's shelves and with his lighting structure and his border, and I got to ask, Kamal, you know, from a standard perspective, what do you think is keeping corporate America from moving forward to make this type of presentation that you deliver 
Because let me tell you guys, Kamal goes to, you know, he's worked for different corporations and he's always leveled them up. He's made them better than they have been. You know, before they came, they were not good. When he got there, he made them better. Right. And he keeps leveling up and bringing them to a whole nother standard. What do you think is keeping people in corporate America, these sales professionals, marketing professionals, SDRs, BDRs, vice presidents, anyone that's customer facing or anyone that's doing anything for the company? from setting a new standard like you have? I would have to say it's more, they're just used to the the old way of doing things. It's hard to change. You got to think about the services and things that we're out there selling. We're we're doing the same thing to certain people. They, they're used to the status quo. They're not going to really change. Um, the only way they'll do it is you have to, you know, when I go in and I'm, doing all this, you know, this, what some may say is fancy stuff. I have to perform too. So if I don't perform at a, at a different level, it won't get recognition. Uh, so that's the one thing you, you definitely, even though you're doing this stuff, you know, the cameras, all that, that's great. That's one piece, but I still have to show, is it worth, is a worthwhile investment? Now for me, I think the way, that I, again, I'm, I'm, t- I'm going back to the kids and how they're bringing the world forward with this social media, you know, uh, social selling, all these different things. You got to do something different. You have to do something different to stand out in this market. There's just too much stuff out there. And there's a very thin line between this product and that product. So they're going to buy ultimately sometimes from us. Who is that first person they're going to meet? We're the face of those organizations. So when I step out there, I want them to see this is the level of professionalism I'm going to put forth. And I've had VPs, directors tell me this. I think I even sent you a clip from one of one of my calls where they said, hey, it looks like you just you give a crap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was shocked to hear that from someone like, you know, it, it tells it shows me, is this the level of you know commitment I'm going to get from the organization? Is every rep like you? Maybe not, but, you know, I'm going to give 100 percent every time. Wow. And, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, you use this as a competitive advantage in building rapport. Is that right? Absolutely. I, I think about it when in the sales profession, you know, the first thing they talk about is rapport building. And, and you know, some people have these. I would say outdated scripts and different things they use about the weather or whatever, you know, whatever it is. I don't even have to think about that because the first thing they say when they see my setup is we're talking about this setup and it's just such an icebreaker. Um, And then the mic, the sound is crucial. Uh, I, I would say for anybody new coming out, the microphone would be my first investment because you, I want them to hear my tone, my inflection, it matters. Wow. Say say more about that, because I know that not only do you, it's not only about the sound for you with the mic, but you've mm-hmm. tried different mics. You've I, also I, I, have, uh, you know, you've tried different mics. You play with the different sound. And even right now, you have a device that's in your ear that people can't even see where yeah. you can hear your voice. Correct. And you you are easily able to make changes. So that you know that you're coming across clear and that you are effective in your pitch and your tone when you have any conversation with anyone in this particular forum. Can you can you talk more about, you know, the different mics in the in the process and how did you get from, you know, where you are, where you were then to where you are now? Yeah, so it's. I almost think about the microphone and the things you can do with it, almost like filters that you would use on your face. Well, you can do those with sound. Um, Most of these high end microphones, and I don't have the mega high end or sure type uh, microphones that are around 500 bucks. This is a Yeti, Yeti Max or something like that. So I have all the Yetis, right? So I can take them with me. Even when I travel, I have the Yeti Nano and I, I plug that up in because I want my sound to hit everywhere. I would rather my sound be together more so than my video. If I had, you know, again, it's, it's that important. I believe it was George Lucas talked about when doing a movie sound is 50 percent of a movie. 
And I kind of just lived off that. And I wanted to make sure I leveled up my mm-hmm. sound. Now, using the the ear, this is the same thing musicians use, you know, if they're singing on a stage or whatever, and they want to hear the sound because, they, you know, the crowd noise. This helps me really be in the moment. It drowns out everything. I can hear your voice. I can hear mine. And then that way I can really pay attention to if I'm going to be super loud or if I get too excited. Now, I have settings in my microphone that do that automatically as well. Now, that's something, you know, you kind of do later where you can set different uh, parameters so that you don't have those plosives and other things in your microphones. So, but leveling up the sound is is crucial because I think, you know, I, I people always tell me about my voice or whatever. I, I can't tell it's my voice. It doesn't, I, it doesn't do anything per se for me. But for others, you know, it could be the sound of my voice. Maybe it, it's soothing to someone. I, I don't know, you know, if it helps get a deal across, so be it. But right. also I wanted to make sure that people can tell that I'm genuine. So even though I'm in a sales world, I'm not out to burn someone because I, I truly believe that, hey, if they buy something from me and I know it's not a good deal, it end up it'll end up being a bad customer down the road. It hurts the business overall. So I try to be totally upfront and I want them to be able to feel it. And they can through a good microphone. Listen to the way it sounds when you hear somebody in their AirPods or they're on a speaker. It just doesn't resonate as well as this conversation we're having right now. You you can tell you're a serious professional. You can you can tell that. I mean, a professional you know, when you think about the definition of it, we're actually looking at the living example of a professional individual that said, you know, based on what you said, you're like, hey, man, I've had all the Yeti microphones. And even though I have this one microphone that I believe sounds good because I've received feedback that it sounds good. I took it a step even forward by getting, you know, the, that little headset so I can hear how I sound so that I can make sure that. I'm delivering the best message that I can to the person I'm talking to. And as soon as they see me and they hear my voice, I'm building rapport. So I don't have those walls or those objections or those obstacles that these other people have when they're making a conversation. And I want people to think about that because think about it. If you're going after a job, a promotion, you're meeting people on Zoom. You're networking with folks on Zoom because we are in a virtual environment oftentimes now. You know, your voice could actually be the bridge to start building that relationship. And also, as well as the visual aspect so that they see that you are a true, absolute professional. It could be the one thing that you can invest in that can help you level up to that next level that you're trying to go for in life. So that's that's awesome, Kamal. Let me ask you this. This is not the only thing that you level up in. I've known that you also make an investment in yourself with coaching, but you also look for other ways to get an an advantage, whether it is using certain social apps to track, you know, and look and understand certain customers, right? Certain companies or even certain contacts so that you have done your homework ahead of time. Some professionals will avoid doing it because they say that the company didn't issue this. So why should I use the commission that I earned to add to myself to help me become a better professional? When did you see it start to pay off for you? Um, for, I guess for me, that's something it's, it's not a payoff, um, uh, that I'm looking up for as far as like, say a company, the way I look at it is, it's, this is just me period. Uh, I'm not doing it for the sake of a company. I think I learned from watching YouTube, watching some of these children out there and what they're doing. Because, look, I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, these children these days, they, they do it differently. That's all. And and I felt like, you know what, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to make some changes and really 
work on, and I'm going to use the term brand. I think that's a, that's a big thing. So my, what is my brand? I, you know, I'm still figuring that out kind of as I, as I go, but I think the, the cool thing about a brand is, is even if you don't necessarily know what it is, and I'll be honest, sometimes I don't always know what my brand is, but I'm living kind of my dream and people are putting together their version of what they think my brand is. And I almost like that a little bit better because I love what people come up with because it's the things that I do every day. I set myself to a higher standard. You know, I go back to the days of my dad, you know, when we had to learn our timetables, everybody had to learn our timetables to 12. We had to learn ours to 15. Mm. I hated that when I was younger, but now I see the advantage of it. And I do that really in everything that I do every day. Um, and they're just small incremental changes. But I think over time, when people see it because of this social media world we live in, it's they just see the end result. But, you know, the video, all that, this is years. I, I was doing this years ago. Um, and it's, I'm just starting to level up. And, you know, honestly, even you've, you've surpassed me in, in some of the things. So it's, you're constantly leveling up. I'm constantly, but I'm worried about Kamal, mm -hmm. not everybody else, mm -hmm. not the company I work for. The thing is, if you level up yourself, the mm -hmm. companies will come to you because you bring something mm -hmm. different to the table. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that's the only thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of doing me in a sense, and I'm always going to make sure Kamal has to do a little bit better. And then like, just personally, look, I, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. So I always had to, what can I do and really highlight my strengths? If I'm not the tallest guy in the world, how can I do it? Mm -hmm. I, re I remember in science class, the, the actually uh, chemistry and it was like force equals mass times acceleration. Well, I wasn't the biggest in mass, so I had to make acceleration with something in order to get the same mm -hmm. level of force. So I had to learn to work with what I had. And sometimes that's my voice. You know, so I'll leverage that and, and use that to my advantage. Um, maybe the way I think, mm -hmm. you know, I think a little bit out the box. I'm thinking two or three moves ahead. You have to. You have to look at. You know, you can't get around. You know, I know social selling was something big, more of a tagline. Now it's coming back even more. You got LinkedIn, all of these places. They're, they're huge now. They started out as one thing and now it's something else. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to move with it. AI, same way. Either you're going to get on it or, or you're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. And for me, I try to really leverage technology, but just like a business, you have to be concerned about scale because now everybody's charging for this and that. And before you know, your expenses can get out of control because you want every app or, you know, every light, every camera. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it can be a lot. So I have to be very strategic. And I'll be honest, uh, some of the mistakes I made before is like, I'll buy this software. I have this software. To, I got to the point where was like, I didn't even know what I had. I didn't know how much money was going out, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but I... I learned to narrow it down and use tools. Hey, how can I leverage this tool that does these six or seven things? I want to be able to track and monitor companies. I want to be able to track and monitor people. Um, you know, how can I learn my industry quickly? How can I right. ramp up quickly? Um, but still leveraging all this technology, because this is the first thing you're going to see. They're going to see all of this and they're going to be kind of impressed. Well, okay, let, let's see what else, what else can he do? Does he know the sales motion? Does he know this? Does he know that? And um, that's, I, you just have to be out on the forefront, leveraging Google alerts and different things like that and staying ahead, but also weeding out the noise. There's a lot of news out there, a lot of tools that we can use, social media, TikTok, all that. You want to make sure that you're filtering to the things that you want in your life. Mm. Um, so that's the big thing. Me and my son kind of go back and forth. I'm like, let, let me look at your TikTok, look at mine. And he's like, man, your TikTok has all these uh, help videos or whatever. And your TikTok has weird videos. I don't even know what. So you got to be careful what you're putting into your mind. So for me, 
it's it's things that are always making me push a little bit harder, push and move a little bit further, just a little bit every day, that incremental increase or what they say, 1% better or something. That's right. Same thing. That's, that's kind of my motto. Let me ask you this. You said something that, uh, wow. I mean, it, I wrote it down. It was so impactful. (laughs) You said level yourself. When you level yourself up, the companies will come to you. And I was Mm -hmm. like, wow, I was said, okay. And I can say you truly, you truly do that. When you think about leveling up, you know, let's transition, you know, even beyond work. I know that Mm -hmm. you travel a lot. Now you are one of the few people I know who, if you see a trip, you're like, hey, I'll go by myself. I'll go to Spain by myself. I'll go to, you know, Portugal or I'll go to, you know, Italy. I'll go to France by myself. And I will experience the culture. I will research the culture and I will come back with a different perspective than what I had before. Where did you get that type of courageousness? Um, Where did you get that type of curiosity? And how has that benefited you personally as well as professionally? Mm, well, I'm not going to say 100%. I, I was scared to death to go. First thing off, I'm scared to fly. I hate flying. <laughs> okay. Absolutely okay. Well, scared see that to death. Yeah. Um, yeah. So actually in one of the, the cool things, that these different jobs I've had, somebody pushed me to take a trip. Um, and literally said, look, you know, I kept saying, I'm, I'm a, I'm gonna go to Spain. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm do it. And he said, well, okay, if you're going to do it, buy the ticket. Cause he said, you've been saying this for a couple months and you still haven't done it. He said, buy the ticket and text me tonight. And that's what I did. I went, I bought the ticket and he was like, now you committed, right? You got money in it. Just like if you're investing in yourself, once you put some money in it, you get a higher chance of actually doing it. Mm-hmm. Now, was I scared to hold, you know, I had a whole month and a half, I think, to kind of prepare myself mentally for this eight or nine hour flight, which to me was the hardest part. And honestly, concentrating so much on the flight, I didn't even worry about being in another country by myself. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to get through the flight. Mm-hmm. So once I got to the flight and got into, I think the first trip I did was to Barcelona and it literally was nothing like I thought. It's almost hmm. like that that adage of a roller coaster. The scariest part, some people say, is waiting in line. Uh, hmm. That's how it is. But then once I got there, all of the myths, the things that people told me like, oh, I can't believe you're going by yourself. You should be scared. When it was a complete opposite. When I get there, they're like scared to death. You guys have school shootings and all these things. You know, they're just as scared as us as we are of them. And I just kind of got lost in it, learning about their cultures and and just seeing how how much of the world was out there I've never experienced outside of Dayton, Ohio, right? I'm I'm what the biggest thing in Dayton, Ohio right now happens to be Cat Williams, right? So <laughs> you know, right. Uh, you know, now it's I wanted to get, break out of my shell. Um, the other part of this was more of a personal journey for me in breaking stereotypes of African-Americans. So it was more Mm -hmm. of a family thing where I said, you know what, I want to go and do some things that I was always told not to do, but I didn't know why. Rather it was don't, you know, we don't eat anchovies. I never Mm -hmm. ate anchovies for 45 years. Mm -hmm. And I never had one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, the whole thing, I had a kind of some different things I wanted to check off. Do you, do you, you like know, the anchovies? I love anchovies. <laughs> I like that. He said, I love them. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, who who said that we couldn't, you know, so I, it, that was a big thing. It started out with food. So yeah. I was like, all right, I'm yeah. going to start eating some things. You know, I had squid and octopus and all that. So I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm like, okay, all let me try they some said, things. Don't eat, you ate. Don't you eat said, that. I, I wanted to try it. <laughs> It was my Anthony Bourdain moment. So that's that's the way we did it. And I started to just kind of post some things online and really just it was more or less by accident. It was more or less like journal entries for me. But all of a sudden I started getting all these people sending me messages like, hey, man, I'm living through you. Where are you going next? When I would get back in the country, they're like, you know, where are you going? You know, 
I, I didn't know it was that big a deal or people saying, hey, I'm living through you. And right. it's like, I, I didn't think it was that, that it would take off like, like that. Cause I consider yeah. myself a regular guy. <laughs> you know, they say, um, there's a saying that sometimes your blessing is not for you. It's for the people watching you because you are inspiring them as they see you going through your journey and your path. And so what you were doing was inspiring so many people. And that's a, that's, that's a huge accomplishment. How has traveling and taking on those fears from, you know, the different experiences, the vast number of experience that you've had, how has that helped you, you know, professionally have a broader outlook and ability to solve problems or even just to be a better professional? Honestly, I, I feel number one, it humbled me. Um, because I think sometimes in the U S we think our way is the best way, the only way and going to other countries and seeing how they, how they live. The family dynamic was, was very impressive to me. I mean, I just, I fell in love with it um, in Spain and Europe, you know, mm -hmm. how they, when they sit down for dinner, it's like a two or two and a half hour adventure right. <laughs> is the only way I could think about it. And just watching them kind of in the streets, how they moved, how they worked. And when I get into my professional life, number one, it, it's another way to, to have conversations. Uh, and I'm saying as an African-American, sometimes we don't get an opportunity to travel the world. Whereas mm -hmm. for some, they have that. They already, you know, they talk about all the backpacking here and there. And I was never able to be present because mm -hmm. I never done any of those things. I never went anywhere. Now mm -hmm. it's, it's fun where I can say, oh yeah, you know, I went to Barcelona or I went to Madrid. I've been to Greece. I loved Athens or what have. And it, it's really fun. Now I can be a part of the conversation at higher levels. So when you're talking about leveling up in the business, it's like you almost have to have that global aspect. Mm. You have to have it to, to be, to have a seat at the room, you know, seat at the table, so to speak, to be well-traveled and mm to learn how different cultures, how they, they do things differently. Maybe certain mm -hmm. words you say here, you can't say, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't know that unless you travel. Wow. So it, it, it should be something, you know, back in the day, I would say for kids who would want to, after college, maybe they want to travel the world out of it. No, you go, go directly to college. Mm -hmm. And that's, maybe that's an old school, you know, methodology that mm -hmm. now you need to be a little bit more, expanded in your your vocabulary and in, in your network mm -hmm. and it, it man it pays off dividends wow. well into your future I, I waited late you know I, I didn't start traveling until i was 48 years old i'm 50 years old now so i waited way too late mm -hmm. and if i could go back mm -hmm. that's the first thing i would have i would have i would have traveled the world a little bit more i love it man um let me ask you uh uh of this man i mean you you know, global aspect and seat at the table. Wow. You, if you were to provide tips for people listening to this that are interested in technology from a visual perspective mm -hmm. or traveling, what are some tips that you would give? Some basic tips to say, hey, you know, if I was starting off this is what I would do for either of those, either one that you would like to talk about. Right. I, I would say for the technology piece, don't, if, if I could start over, I would say, don't go heavy. I got drawers full of um, gadgets that I bought that I don't use or whatever. Start, start slow and let this build. It's almost like, think of it as a diet, a healthy, don't even use the word diet, say lifestyle. Cause this is a lifestyle type of thing and let it build over time. Start out with a good microphone. That would be the first investment I would tell anybody. Um, if you have like an iPhone, honestly, you can use your iPhone as a camera. A lot of people don't know that you can hook that to your Mac and you can actually use it as your webcam instead of the actual camera on the on a MacBook. And I have I've done that. I've used it and it's just as good. And actually, some other features you can actually move around and it'll move with you if you have one of the pro models. Uh, iPhone. So there's a lot you could do with it. 
but don't get too in the weeds. Master one thing at a time. This is the one time I'm going to say, don't get into that whole multitasking. And as a former engineer, I hate the term multitasking because you, you don't <laughs> get 100% into one. You get 20% into five different things. Give 100%, learn it, and it'll save you so much trouble later because if you compound it and start saying, okay, I want the microphone, I want the camera, I want this. Now you got to study all of these different things and you, you won't have a life. I can tell you that because you'll be watching <laughs> a lot of video and, and I've okay. done it. So enjoy it, master the microphone, get it down and then start working and building from there. As far as what about travel, travel? Mm -hmm. what I would say with travel, what, what helped me with travel um, was using different tools, uh, Google flights. Now you can even use chat GPT, but mm -hmm. if you have a work, you know, for me, I'm a remote worker. So I have a lot more flexibility. I work at a company that has unlimited vacations. So do I have some perks? Yeah. But I pick my flights or when I want to go somewhere off the ticket price, not when I want to go <laughs> when the price is right is when I travel. So it might not be peak season. It might be before peak season. It might be a little bit after peak season, which is fine with me. I don't want to be there all the time with a ton of people, especially when you're traveling solo. Uh, makes it a little bit safer. Um, so that would be one thing. Saves you a lot of money. But the biggest tip that I learned, um, and I'm a planner, mm -hmm. But this guy showed me in real life on the first trip I went with him, we went to Mexico and we were on a bus somewhere and a lady pulled out her and her boyfriend's itinerary and he asked to see it. And he looked at it and she had it broken down to like, you know, we're going to do this from 2.30 to 3.37. It was literally that detail. And he just busted out laughing. He said, this is insane. He's like, how can you enjoy yourself? With uh -huh. this? And he told me, he said, this is an example of what not to do when you travel. He said, <laughs> what I suggest you do is pick out what you want to do, say, the first half a day. So if you want to pick something, if you're Airbnb, you know, they have the Airbnb of different adventures or whatever, you can pick out something, maybe a tour. But the back half of the day, leave wide open and just leave it to your imagination. And I didn't understand. I'm thinking like, man, I'm going to be in another country and won't know what to do. But I followed that when I went to Barcelona the first time, and it was probably the best advice I've ever had because, you know, I, I actually also stayed in a, um, <laughs> I, I stayed in a hostel. So I, I mm -hmm. broke every, every rule. Um, but I had so much fun in that hostel networking. I had stuff to do every night, rather it was cooking uh, in the hostel, mm -hmm. talking to different people from all over the world. It, it was the funnest thing I had ever experienced. It was, people were just so nice. Um, the other thing I learned, mm -hmm. I should have stayed up on my Spanish. It's a shame in this country, we should know more than one language because everybody I spoke to at minimum spoke two to three languages. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that I yeah. could not speak probably barely speak English, but I should, <laughs> I should be learning another language. That's another thing. When I think about leveling up that yeah. I learned with the global traveling is I have to do that. That's something I'm, I'm, I'm going to invest in as well is taking Spanish class. Well, man, uh, I appreciate your time. This has been great. It's everything I wanted it to be. Um, as you can see, you know, there, there, you know, you can start traveling and you can also start you know, leveling up using technology. Age is just a number. It doesn't matter. You know, it's, you know, Kamal is living proof of that by, you know, just starting with one thing, mastering that, and then moving to another thing when it comes to technology. The importance of, you know, seeing different ways of doing things and experiencing things. He's did it with travel. And, you know, he, he also was aware of just how to purposely recognize the opportunities that he saw with his children and what they were doing on social and said, I think I can use this to differentiate myself and make me stand out from the crowd. You know, that's huge. 
where can people find you if they want to connect with you? You know, like on uh, Instagram or even uh, LinkedIn, how can they find you? Yeah, it's just KJ Gregory one pretty much for all of those is is my tagline for whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram. So I keep it pretty simple. Um, love to chat with folks. They can reach out to me and I respond, you know, pretty, pretty quickly. Awesome. Well, thanks, Kamal. It was great having you on this combo with CJ. And thank you so much, man. Thank you. I appreciate it.